Hey guys, it's Archon. So recently a lot of information has been coming out about both the console and PC versions of Diablo 3 and how they might intermingle in the future. So I just wanted to share with you guys what I found on the interwebs. And first up we have this interview from Diablo some page. They released it in three parts. The third part just coming out two days ago. I read through it and I just wanted to give you guys the too long didn't read version and my opinion on the information they shared. So the first part kind of focuses on how the PC might get some of the features that are currently exclusive to the console. And I think this is the first time we've heard something about that. There's some features they've added to the console and they will consider putting them on the PC. They use really non-committal language, but they said once the console version comes out on September 3rd, they're going to let players play around with some of the features, and if they like some of them a lot, they'll consider putting them on the PC. So one of the features they talked about were these orbs that provide a 10 second character buff. They didn't go into detail about them, but that was the first time I'd heard about them. I guess orbs can just drop and you get a quick buff. Sound like a cool idea, might be fun to try out. Another thing is the boss fights. They've tailored some of the boss fights for consoles, but they've also said they've learned a lot about the boss fights and then have been able to make them more exciting. So I think the Belial fight is the best example. You can see that they've kind of lowered the camera and just made the fight a little bit more visceral. They also say whether or not they take the console versions of the boss fight into PC, future boss fights, I imagine in the expansion, will be a lot more exciting than the current ones. So that was pretty good to hear. I also learned for the first time that they have this co-op and online play that can exist at the same time. In other words, you can be doing co-op with someone else on the couch on the same screen, but playing online with one or two other people in another city, and you're all still in the same game. And the cool part about that is when you're playing co-op, you're tethered to the same screen, obviously, because it's not split screen, it's one screen. But if you're playing online, you're not tethered. So if you two are playing here and there's two other people in another city, you guys will each be tethered to your own screens, but you could split off separate from each other. So I thought that was cool how that works out. You can really have any combination of online and co-op. That's mostly what they covered in part one. There's a few other things. Uh, the links to everything I cover here will be in the description so you can read through them more if you want. Uh, most of this stuff had kind of been talked about earlier. They did mention um, my interview halfway through, which I thought was pretty cool. Thanks, guys. Uh, the one other thing they mentioned is that the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions won't have the same website functionality that the PC version has. I guess there's some kind of issues with the networks on PlayStation and Xbox. You won't be able to actually go on and look at your character uh, the same way you can on Battle.net right now. But they said possibly on PS4 you will have that functionality. Part two of the interview was all about itemization, and while the entire interview was with Josh Mosquera, Travis Day, and Kevin Martins, it seemed like Travis Day really tackled this one, as he's kind of the itemization guy. Most of the information in here I think has already been shared before, so I'll go over what I saw to be new information, and you can read the interview if you'd like to. They did say that itemization won't happen before BlizzCon, and Travis Day said definitely not before BlizzCon, so it seems like we're probably going to get itemization in 2014, which has been our guess on the channel. It seems like they don't want to release small patches, they'd rather release one big overhaul to the itemization system, and I'm guessing it's going to be the same for the other big game updates, which makes sense. But those of you who've been hoping to get itemization 1.0.9, sorry, probably not until next year. He then talked about itemization in general, but most of this has been discussed earlier, so I won't spend too much time on it. He did have one idea for a legendary that I hadn't seen shared before, which was a legendary that would cause a treasure goblin to follow you around, pick up the white and gray items, and then spit out magical items. So they want to make legendaries more exciting, but not necessarily just legendaries that add more power, also just fun legendaries. Part three of the interview seemed to be mostly about the economy. He starts off by talking about how you might be able to upgrade your items, and they seemed pretty happy with that idea, something that I would think would be really cool. And he said that once you upgraded your items, they would be non-tradable. So of course that would take more items out of the economy, it would stop inflation of items a little bit. I would also hope that you could only upgrade items you found yourself, because I'm a big proponent of self-found and taking the game away from the auction house. But they didn't mention that at all. After that, they talked about gold sinks and generating new, exciting gold sinks. They say they like to add gold sinks one at a time to see how they affect the game, uh, but they want you to have a lot of different exciting things you can do 
with gold. Unfortunately, they didn't give many examples, but I think it is a good idea. Obviously, gold inflation is an issue in Diablo, and it would be nice to have some exciting gold sinks in the game. They, all, they then talked about the auction house gold cap and raising it from 2 billion gold. Uh, apparently, it's not as easy as you might think. They said it's not just punching an extra couple extra zeros into the spreadsheet. They actually have to redo their system so that they can raise the gold cap, which is kind of weird to me, but uh, I guess uh, that's how it works. And they said because of things like the gold dupe bug, they want to be really careful with raising it because issues with uh, the auction house obviously can really ruin the game economy if they're not implemented correctly. And then the end of the interview, the end of part three, they talk about how they want to add more viable builds to the game. Uh, nothing really new, they just talk about how a lot of characters, especially uh, wizards and barbarians, feel like they have to use certain skills to be as powerful as other characters, and they want players to be able to play however they want uh, with lots of different builds and always be viable and efficient. Um, and then at the very end, they talked about how elite packs should be harder than bosses. And I'm not sure how I feel about this, but they think that bosses just represent uh, major parts of the storyline. They shouldn't be a huge challenge like the elites are. Personally, I would love it if the bosses were a bigger challenge. Um, they seem to kind of contradict themselves a little bit here, but this is Kevin Martin's. I haven't heard from him before. Uh, he was saying they don't really want to incentivize boss kills much, but we've heard from developers in the past that they want to incentivize them more. So I got kind of mixed signals based on that. I really hope they do incentivize bosses more. Um, and like they said, they're going to be making them more exciting. I think they should be more difficult as well. But uh, let me know what you guys think. So other than that interview, there was also a video posted on Diablo fans of an interview from E3 talking with Josh Mascara about the console version. And I just wanted to share with you some of the exciting pieces I heard from the video. But of course, it's linked below if you want to watch it yourself. I was wondering how you were going to handle picking up and looking at items in the console version. They touched on it a little bit. Uh, apparently, you'll be able to look at items, compare them with your current items, equip or drop them without opening your inventory. So it's all very streamlined. You can just look at them, decide what you want to do, drop them. Uh, they've already said there's going to be less items than there is in the PC version, but they'll be of higher, higher quality. They also mentioned in this video, though, that the items will be targeted to your character. I think this is something that would be nice if it was added to the PC version, but I haven't heard anything about that. Basically, if you're a barbarian, the chances of barbarian items dropping is going to be much higher than for other classes. So you'll be finding a lot of items that are for yourself, kind of like in Marvel Heroes. I think it's a good system and one that would work well on the PC. Uh, and then the only other thing, kind of a small thing, but they said that the right stick is what you'll use to ev evade. And I was kind of wondering about how the evade mechanical work. But because uh, the left stick is to move and aim, essentially, you're just aiming in the direction you're facing, the right stick will just have the utility of evading in whatever direction you hit it in. Diablo fans also pulled some blue posts from the Blizzard forums talking about monster density and monster power on the console versions. And uh, they said that monster density will still get buffed when you go up monster powers like it does in the PC version, but it won't be as significant. And they said the reason is due to performance issues. So I guess maybe this, the consoles can't handle that much mob density, but it won't be as significant. They also will have monster power on the console version, but it's going to be a little bit different. They say there's going to be an easy mode, which is like MP0, medium will be MP2, hard MP4, and then master 1 is MP6, and they have master 2, 3, 4, 5, which goes up to Monster Power 10, uh, respectively. So it's a similar system to PC version, just tailored slightly to the console. So the last piece of information I have from you guys was another blue post, this one written by Lilira, discussing the differences between console and PC, uh, specifically about itemization. She mentioned that on the console version, it's possible that the white and gray items will automatically be converted into gold. So I don't know if that means that when you walk over them, they automatically give you gold, or if they just turn into gold when you pick them up. But I think that's a cool idea. I would love to have that in the PC version, as right now, white and gray items really have no utility. She then talked a little bit about the development process between console and PC, and she called it staggered development. So sometimes consoles will actually get updates before the PC versions, and then sometimes PC versions will get updates first. I know this is definitely going to upset some people uh, because people don't want to feel like consoles ever getting priority over PC. 
She did end by saying, even so, PC will always be the lead platform. We don't know exactly what that means, um, but I know a lot of people are hoping that console doesn't ever take precedence because we want to know that the PC development isn't being hindered. However, they've said before that when the console version comes out, it will only have patch 1.0.7 and some of 1.0.8 and I imagine 1.0.9 will be out or close to being out on PC by then. Uh, I guess I think some of us would be upset if it wasn't at least in the works. Um, then she responds to some people who were posting about how there haven't been any updates on itemization. Uh, a lot of people are upset that Travis Day came out with this huge really exciting itemization post and then we just haven't gotten any new information since then and it's really hard to tell how much work they've done. They keep ensuring us that they've done a lot of work, they just don't have anything they can share. Um, and so I understand why some people are frustrated. Personally, I'm just hoping that whenever we get a, the next big patch or when the expansion comes out, that it's good enough that our reaction is something like, oh, that's what they've been working on this whole time. Uh, I think a lot of us are worried that when they finally reveal what they've been working on, it's gonna be disappointing. But uh, all we can do is hope. I have a lot of optimism for the expansion, and I will uh, I will admit defeat if the expansion comes out and it looks like they haven't put much work into it. Uh, I was also excited to see that she mentioned that she'd like to do more chats, like the one that Travis Day and Wyatt Chang had on my stream. So uh, yeah, Blizzard, you want to do more chats? I'm always available. You just let me know. So a lot of information there, albeit most of the information had already been stated before. That's just why I kind of wanted to go through, pick out the new nuggets of information and share them with you guys. But if you want to read through all of that, all the links are posted below in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that subscribe button and I'll have another one for you soon.